Hello, girls, and happy holidays. Welcome to the Girl Scout Baking and Holiday Traditions event. My name is Avocado, and we are thrilled that you decided to join us for some Girl Scout holiday spirit, fun, and sharing of our favorite holiday traditions. This event will be 100% hosted and run by older Girl Scouts, and everyone will complete their steps towards the Chef's Anonymous badge. You should have received and pre-watched our pre-event video sent your way, featuring me, Avocado, as I demonstrated how to make gingerbread cookie dough using this recipe. This recipe is from my Nana Jane, a really great gingerbread cookie recipe. This event starts as we all as we all take our previously made cookie dough out, out of the refrigerator. If you haven't done that, do that now. Mine is right here, sitting on some flour. Great. During this event, we will learn about baking and equipment required to make these holiday cookies. We will go through the process step by step, starting with cookie dough and ending with decorating cookies. How fun is that? One last thing is uh, I'd like to ask you to do before I hand you off to Issa Candyland is please turn on your oven to 375 degrees. So that is perfectly warmed up when we are ready to bake our yummy cookies. Of course, you should have a trusted adult alongside you today. So please ask them to turn on the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit as your recipe states. Okay, holiday bakers, I'd like to introduce you to my friend and Girl Scout sister, Candyland. Thank you, Avocado. Hello, holiday bakers. I'm Candy Lynn, and I love the holidays. Thank you for joining us today. We are sure to have a wonderful time. Also, you will learn a recipe that you could share with your friends, family, and friends. It is definitely a fan favorite. Today, it is my job to lead you through the Girl Scout Promise and Law. I'm sure you all know how to do this. Please join me and raise your right hand and your middle three fingers with me. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authorities, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Great job, thank you for joining me. Okay, my fellow bakers, I'd like to introduce you to my Girl Scout sister, Paya. Thank you, Candyland. Hello, holiday bakers. Welcome, I'm Papaya, and I love the holidays. Thank you for joining us today. I'm super excited about our time together. I'm particularly excited about starting baking as I love the smell of cookies in my house. Today, it's my job to lead you through the Pledge of Allegiance. Please see the flag on the screen. Please put your right hand over your heart and join me. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That was great. Thank you for joining me. Okay, holiday bakers, I'd like to introduce you to my Girl Scout sister, Pineapple. Thank you, Papaya. Hello, holiday bakers. I'm Pineapple and I love the holidays. Thank you for joining us today. I'm super excited about our time together today. I'm really looking forward to decorating cookies. I also don't mind eating them. Today, it's my job to share with you the event rules. Most of the rules are found in the Girl Scout Promise and Law. We, most of the rules are found in the Girl Scout Promise and Law we just recited. Please respect yourself and others during this session and everyone should have a great time while learning a lot and earning your Chef's Anonymous badge. Also remember that this entire event is being hosted by older Girl Scouts, so please be patient with us. Rule one is to have an adult with you the entire time. You should not be participating in this event without a safe adult by your side. Rule two is to please use the Zoom chat feature if you have any questions. If you have a question, you may send a direct message to our Girl Scout leader, who is the admin, or any of us older Girl Scouts. Here's a tip. If you want to share something with us, send a message to one of the girls not presenting, and our Girl Scout sister will be sure to share your comments with us. We also like hearing holiday jokes along the way. Rule three is to please put your Zoom in speaker mode. This will allow you to better see the instruction during this event. You can go ahead and do that now. 
Rule four is to get to know your reaction buttons. We will ask you for a thumbs up during several parts of the session. Show me your thumbs up. Also, we will ask you to use your raised hand function if you need to slow down. Show me your raised hand. Great job, girls. Rule five is to change your Zoom name to your camp name plus your state that you live in. For example, my name is Pineapple, California. This is to protect your privacy. If you don't have a camp name, you can use your favorite candy instead. For example, I could be Skittles, California. You can go ahead and do that now. Rule six is to let your family and anyone in your house know when you have your Zoom video on. This event will be recorded and we will be taking pictures and screenshots as indicated in the invitation. If you do not want your picture shared, please turn off your Zoom video setting. Rule seven is you may leave to use the restroom if you need to. You do not need to ask permission. Rule eight is if you don't know what materials we are using, look in the Zoom chat or look for information via screen sharing. Rule nine is to learn a lot and have fun. Thank you for paying attention. Before I let you go, let me share with you a couple of holiday jokes. What do you call an elf that runs away from Santa's workshop? A rebel without a clause. What is it called when a snowman has a temper tantrum? A meltdown. Okay, holiday bakers, I'd like to introduce you to my Girl Scout sister, Chupacabra. Thank you, Pineapple. Hello, holiday bakers, I'm Chupacabra and I love the holidays. I like the time away from school and time to spend with my friends and most importantly, my family. Thank you for joining us today. I'm really looking forward to enjoying a cookie at the end of the session. I know they will be delicious. As Avocado mentioned, during the Girl Scout Holiday Baking and Traditions event, we will earn our Chef's Anonymous badge while making holiday cookies. The Girl Scout's Chef's Anonymous badge is an official badge, also sometimes called as a troop's own badge, or more commonly known as an MYO, make your own badge. This badge has requirements similar to badges offered by Girl Scouts USA. Once you earn it, you can get it and put it right on your vest. I think it's really cute and I hope you do too. Avocado also mentioned that in addition to taking your dough out of the refrigerator, you should have preheated your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Preheating an oven is especially important with baking when you use yeast, baking soda and baking powder as leavening agents. Leavening agents help bake goods rise and they react to heat. Food also cooks faster in a preheated oven. When you've got the right temperature from the get-go, your cookies can start baking immediately, evenly, and within the indicated time period. Now is also a great time to wash your hands with soap. We always wash our hands before we start cooking, baking, or working in the kitchen. If you haven't done this, please go wash your hands with soap now. While we wait, Pineapple, do you have any jokes for me? I do. What reindeer game do reindeers play at sleepovers? I don't know. What do they play? Truth or deer. That's a good one. Does anybody else have a joke? Here, yeah, I have another one. Um, Here. What is Santa's dog's name? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Santa Paws. That's good. Okay. Great job. We are one step closer to starting to bake. Okay, holiday bakers, I like to hand you off to my Girl Scout sister, Canyon. Let me turn off my background really quickly. Um, thank you, Trooper Copper. Hello, holiday bakers. It's me again, Candyland. I'm excited to bake with you all today. Making holiday cookies is one of my favorite holiday traditions. Can you give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the tradition of baking and decorating holiday cookies? Great. I'm glad you, I'm glad to know that so many of you also love this tradition. Speaking of traditions, I'd like to share with you my favorite holiday tradition. My favorite holiday tradition is on Christmas Eve, I get to see my extended family and friends. We bake appetizers, cookies, and candies together, and everyone and we get to hang out. 
Um, we snack and visit, and sometimes we make gingerbread houses too. It is a lot of fun. Now I'm gonna walk you through our equipment, list of everything you should have in front of you or nearby. You should have um, flour, a rolling pin, cutting board, cookie cutters, a, a baking sheet, parchment paper, or parchment paper or nonstick spray, a flat spatula, a hot mitt, and an optional thick. It is a great time to take inventory to make sure you have everything you need. If you don't, please ask your, your trusted adult to get the items you are missing. Let's share our screen to show you the items I just went over. In the meantime, let me repeat the, it one more time. You should have flour, a rolling pin, cutting board, cookie cutters, baking sheets, parchment paper or nonstick spray, a flat spatula, a hot mitt, and your optional sifter. Also, as a reminder, you should have your safe adult nearby. Great. Now that you have everything we need, we can start. I'm excited. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to, to start. Okay, great. Uh, the first thing, okay, the first thing we are going to do is we are going to dust your rolling pin with flour. And you're going to put the flour onto your rolling pin like that. And dust your surface. And then you could also do it to your um, cookie cutter so it doesn't stick to the cookie dough. Um, does anyone know why we dust the surface with flour? Uh, give me a thumbs up if you do. Okay, it looks like some of you do know. Uh, we give the we give the surface dough. Oh wait, we give the surface dough and rolling pin. Okay. Um. We give the surface dough and rolling pin a light dusting of flour to prevent sticking to the dough to the flat surface the dough to the rolling pin and anything else. You can also lightly dust the cookie cutters with flour when you get to that step. You could go ahead and do this now. I can see that you are all doing great and ready to move on to the next step. Okay, my holiday bakers, I'd like to introduce you to my Girl Scout sister, Coconut. Hello, holiday bakers. Thank you, Candyland. My name is Coconut and I love the holidays. I'm excited to bake with you all today. Decorating holiday cookies is one of my favorite holiday traditions. We left off about to roll out the cookie dough. It's been about half an hour since we took the dough out of the refrigerator. It should still be firm, but not as hard and cold as it was when you first took it out. Does everyone know why we chill cookie dough? Give me a thumbs up if you do. For those girls who don't know, we chill cookie dough because the dough may be sticky and hard to roll if not thoroughly chilled. Chilling also gives the melted shortening the opportunity to firm up. Isn't that interesting? But before we continue, I'd like to share with you my favorite holiday tradition. My family has an elf that comes and visit, visits us each holiday season. His name is Joseph. Joseph is a messy little elf and sometimes he's really adventurous. One time he made a zip line from our tree all across the living room. Another time he made a snow angel out of flour. I love cooking 
for him in the morning to looking for him in the morning to see where I will find him. He is certainly one of my favorite holiday traditions. Okay, we now have our dusted dough, our dusted surface, and our dusted rolling pin. All of this dusting should help prevent some of the sticking that we see when we're rolling out holiday cookies. You will want to keep your flour handy as you may need some more. Before we start rolling out the dough, I'm going to break my dough ball in half and only roll out one half at a time. You can do this, that too. So this is my big thing of dough and I'm going to take about this half right here and I'm going to start rolling that. Okay, we are ready to roll. So you're gonna take your rolling pin and you're gonna go like this. You're just gonna go back and forth like this. Looks like I put a little bit too much flour on my cutting board, but that's okay. Eventually it'll all stick together once you roll it out a little bit more. Okay. Let's go ahead and roll the dough one way. Make sure you move your dough around so that it's not sticking to the surface. If it is, you can use your spatula to remove it and put some more flour on the surface. It's totally okay to move your dough to the side, like 180 degrees to get your dough evenly rolled out. Keep rolling out your dough until it's even in thickness and is about a quarter inch thick. If it's any thinner, the cookies will cook too fast. The recipe is designed to make cookies that are soft, firm, and delicious, not crispy and dry. Keep rolling and, and turning your dough until it's totally even. If you're having trouble with this step, it's totally okay to have your adult help you. So I'm going to turn my dough like this, and then I'm gonna start rolling it this way as well. Does anyone have a joke for me while everyone rolls out their dough? I have a joke. What is it? What did the gingerbread man put on his bed? What? A cookie sheet. That's a good one. <laughs> what do snowmen eat for breakfast? I don't know, what? Ice Krispies. <laughs> That's a good one. Who is never hungry at Christmas? I don't know. Who? The turkey. He's always stuffed. <laughs> um, why do reindeers like Beyonce so much? I don't know. Why? She slays. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. Looks like everyone is doing a great job. Give me a thumbs up if you're having fun. Excellent. Okay, Holiday Bakers, it's time for me to hand you off to my Girl Scout sister, Avocado. Hello, ladies. Okay. Thank you, Coconut. Hi, Holiday Bakers, it's me again, Avocado. As you are finishing up rolling out your dough, I'd like to share with you my favorite holiday tradition. Our family has an elf named Khaki. Each year, Khaki arrives after Thanksgiving and stays through Christmas Eve. Khaki does a lot of silly things and sometimes even brings his kid gifts like hot chocolate bombs. One of my favorite gifts he brings to our family every year is a beautiful gingerbread house. Like the elf, we don't touch it until Christmas Eve. And on Christmas Eve, we break it apart and eat it. It's so much fun. Let me see. Great. It looks like most of you are ready to move on to our next step. Before we start using our cookie cutters, will everyone check their ovens and make sure that it's at 375 degrees? And if it's at 375 degrees, please give me a big thumbs up. And if not, talk to your trusted adult 
to help you with that. Seeing a few thumbs ups. Good. Okay, perfect. Minus two. Now that we're all warmed up and the cookie dough is rolled out to, to be one fourth inch thick, we are almost ready to cut them and put them on our baking sheets. But the most important thing is that the dough is rolled out um, the same thickness all the way through. So, so the cookies cook evenly. Before we start using the cookie cutters, we need to prepare the baking sheets. And there's really two ways you can do this. The way I usually like to do it is by parchment paper. It's really easy, just put it on there. It doesn't even have to be exactly the length of the pan. It just has to be cover everything. And yeah, the cleanup is super easy. I love it. Super, super simple. Or you can take this, or you can take a pan and you spray it with vegetable oil or pan or whatever nonstick spray you have. But that's also pretty simple, pretty easy to clean up. Um, however, if you don't have parchment paper to put down, you can definitely spray it with um, your nonstick items or even, like I've seen my grandma rub a stick of butter on it. That works too. Now, whichever way you've chosen, you will make, your, you will make sure your cookies don't stick to the baking sheet. So go ahead and prepare that now. Pineapple, do you have any jokes for me? I do. What does Santa suffer from if he gets stuck in a chimney? Oh, I don't know. Claustrophobia. <laughs> That's funny. Why are elves such great motivational speakers? Why? They have plenty of elf confidence. <laughs> like self confidence? <laughs> yeah. Um, let me see. Oh, how more? can Santa deliver presents during a thunderstorm? I don't know. Oh. His sleigh is flown by reindeer. Oh, oh like rain? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I see a lot of girls preparing their cookie sheets. That's really great. Thank you, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you're preparing your baking sheet. Okay, good job, ladies. It's time for me to hand you off to hand you back to my Girl Scout sister, Coconut. Thank you, Avocado. Hi, holiday bakers. It's me again, Coconut, and I'm having a great time. This is so much fun. Thank you for joining us today. I'm super excited about our time together. I'm particularly excited about our next step. Next, we are going to cut out cookies. This is my favorite part of making holiday cookies. I have an entire collection of cookie cutters here. Let me show some of them to you. Here are my three favorites. I have my star, my gingerbread person, and I have a tree. Show me your thumbs. Who likes the star the best? What about the gingerbread person? And last, who likes the tree the most? I'm not sure which cookie cutter got the most votes. I think they're all of your favorites too. We are going to use all three today. As you can see, I have my dough that is rolled out. My line cookie sheet is behind me and I have my cookie cutters. I also have my metal spatula to transfer the cookies. Here we go. I'm going to dust my cookie cutter with a little flour so it doesn't stick to my dough, just like this. Once you do that, If your cookie dough comes up like mine when you lift up your cookie cutter, that's okay. Just push it out directly onto your baking sheet. Next, I'm going to use my tree cookie cutter. I'm going to dust it with a little bit of flour. 
And then I'm going to push it right through and wiggle it one more time. Um, one thing to be aware of is that your cookies will expand both in height and in width when they're baked due to the leavening agent. So you're going to want to make sure you spread them out and leave about a half of an inch between each cookie. Looks like you're all starting to get the hang of this. Keep going until your baking sheet is completely full. Let me show you my full baking sheet. Just like this. What do you guys think? Do they look cool? Okay. Well, everyone's cutting out their cookies. Does anyone have a joke for me? I do. What is it? What is Santa's favorite kind of candy? I don't know. What? Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, how do elves respond when Santa takes attendance? I don't know. How? Present. <laughs> That's a good one, too. Which of Santa's friends is the most chill? I don't know. Which one? Jack Frost. <laughs> That's cute. Candyland, do you have any jokes? Yeah, I do. What are they? Uh, who is Santa's favorite singer? I don't know. Who? Elfish Presley. <laughs> That's a cute one. Okay, we should be pretty close to getting our baking sheet full. Um, I have my full baking sheet right here. This is what it should look like. This is how much I spaced each of my cookies out. It looks like everyone's getting the hang of this. These all look so awesome. Okay, holiday bakers, thank you for cutting out cookies with me. Now I'm going to hand you off to my Girl Scout sister, Pineapple. Hi, holiday bakers. It's me, Pineapple. Thank you, Coconut. Those cookies look great. I think my favorite is the star-shaped cookie cutter. As you continue to cut out your cookies and transfer them to your baking sheets, I'd like to share with you my favorite holiday tradition. My favorite holiday tradition is when my grandma comes and stays with us during Christmas. She lives in Savannah, Georgia, where Juliet Gordon Lowe started Girl Scouts, so we go don't get to see her very often. It's really fun to make cookies with her and use all of her recipes. It's also fun to watch movies and play board games. It makes the holidays just that much better. Also, this Christmas, I get to go visit her in Savannah, which we haven't done for a really long time, so I'm really excited to spend time with her. Now, after you have all your cookies on your baking sheet, we get to put them in the oven. They look so yummy, and I'm so excited that they are ready to bake. Now is a good time to get your oven mitt. Even though your baking sheet isn't hot yet, it's a good habit to make sure you don't burn yourself in the future. So here's my oven mitt. Go ahead and put your baking sheets on the middle rack. You can go ahead and do that now with the help of your safe adult. Cookies should almost always be baked on the middle rack of the oven because the middle rack offers the most even heat and air circulation, which helps the cookies bake consistently. Now we need to set our timer. It's very important. I'm going to use the timer on my phone, but you can use the timer on your oven, microwave, or even a manual timer. So let me open my timer on my phone. So this is my timer. And so we don't want to overcook our cookies because they will become dry and brittle. I'm gonna set my timer for six minutes. So here's my timer for six minutes. And make sure to take your cookies out when your timer goes off and not when mine goes off. So I'm also going to turn on my oven light so that I can see how they look. You can do that too if you want to. 
I'm getting so excited. These are going to be delicious. Okay, holiday bakers, it's time for me to hand you over to my Girl Scout sister, Papaya. Thank you, Pineapple. Hi, holiday bakers. How's everyone doing? And how's everyone's house smelling? Mine is smelling amazing. I love the aroma of gingerbread. It's definitely a sign that the holidays are here and it's time to celebrate. As a reminder, my name is Papaya. And while our cookies are baking, I'd like to share with you my favorite holiday tradition. One of my favorite holiday traditions is the Christmas Eve party my family does at my grandma's. During it, we make peanut butter balls, watch holiday movies, hang out, and at the end, we go look at holiday lights. While we're waiting for our cookies to bake, let's make a quick cup of hot cocoa. Everyone should have a mug full of water that they can put in the microwave for two minutes. With the help of your safe adult, go ahead and do that now. You can get hot cocoa ready either from a packet like I have, or you can get it from a can. Both will work. Once your water is warm, you can use a spoon to stir in the hot cocoa into your water. So I have my mug of water in my packet. Third in. In the chat, let me know if you like marshmallows, whipped cream, both or none in your hot cocoa. I like to put marshmallows and little crushed candy canes. I have some marshmallows here. And then I have my crushed candy canes. That in. Looks like a lot of people like marshmallows in their hot chocolate, which is awesome. Me too. Here's my hot chocolate. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, okay. Well, perfect timing. When you check on your cookies, they shouldn't look wet visually. They also should bounce back when you lightly touch them. You may want to have the help of your safe adult determine if your cookies are done. If you need to cook a little longer, be sure to add time in one minute increments so you don't overcook them. Also, it's important that you know your cookies will continue to bake once you remove them from the oven, since the baking sheet will stay warm. Go ahead and mm -hmm. now. Let me take off my background. Okay. Let's see my oven. There we go. Here are my cookies. I don't know if you can see them. They're looking perfect. I'm going to put them down and let them cool off for a little bit before we remove them from the baking sheet. How's your cookies looking? Be sure to listen to your timers. Okay, holiday bakers, it's time for me to hand you off to my friend, Avocado. Okay. Thank you, Papaya. Hi, holiday bakers, it's me, Avocado. And I made a how to make frosting video to share with you. Many of you may have already seen it. So show me your raised hands if you've already seen the how to make the frosting video. Okay, perfect. See a few. Oh. It is no problem if you have yet watched the video. You can make your frosting now as you watch the video with me. If you have already prepared your frosting, go ahead and roll out your dough again and cut some more holiday cookies. You can put them on a fresh and prepared baking sheet or have them ready once we remove the cookies from the sheet you just pulled out of the oven. Either way, we don't want to put our cookies on a hot baking sheet as that will alter the amount of time needed to cook that batch. Here is the video. 
I'm Avocado, and I'm here to show you how to make frosting to decorate your holiday cookies. There are lots of ways to make frosting, and this is my favorite because it spreads very nicely and it's super delicious. Remember, you should always have a trusted adult with you when you're working in the kitchen. First, we're going to use this mixer, and we're going to use the whisk attachment, which is here and this will basically beat the frosting so it's super creamy. If you don't have a tabletop mixer or even a hand mixer, you can do this by hand and the frosting will taste just as great. As for the tools needed, in addition to the mixer, we'll need a bowl, which is here, um, measuring spoons, three smaller bowls, and food coloring for the frosting colors. Um, and if you don't have a mixer for the food coloring, you can use forks to mix it up. That's exactly what I'm going to do. And you can use a Ziploc bag for decorating when for like a makeshift pastry bag. Next, let's go over the ingredients. So there are four main ingredients to this frosting recipe. We have one pound of powdered sugar, one cube of butter, and one fourth cup of milk, and of course, our food coloring. Please have a standard set of colors, like red, green, yellow, blue. You also may want some sprinkles for your decorating. As you can see, my butter is softened. I put it in the microwave for like about 30 seconds. So that is a, so it is completely soft and ready to go. So I guess we're ready to start. So, first, I'm going to put this entire box of powdered sugar in my mixing bowl. Okay. Okay, great. Next, I'm going to add the butter to the sugar. And because the butter is still mostly solid, I'm going to use a spatula to scrape it out. It's gonna be great. Okay. And then we're gonna add the milk, which is approximately one fourth of a cup. Awesome. Now we're just gonna lower the whisker or whisking machine, lock it, and we're ready to go. So we're just gonna stir it on, on low for a couple seconds. I can see that it looks great. Okay, we're just going to take a minute to make sure that everything is mixed in. But of course, first we have to taste test. It's wonderful. Awesome. So I'm going to take a spatula and make sure that all the ingredients are off the sides. We even have to get the frosting out of the whisker, or formerly called the whisk attachment. Um, yeah, this is great so far. Okay. Just leave that there. And then we're going to mix it one more time just to make sure everything is ready to go. Okay. So this is exciting. This is the point where you can decide if your frosting is too chunky or it needs to be creamier. And this is when you can add milk. It, um, make sure to use your... Uh, measuring spoons so that you don't add too much. Um, as a recommendation, I add one tablespoon at a time to make sure that it's the right consistency. If you don't have enough milk for this, you can absolutely use water. 
Okay, so this looks great. Okay, you can see it's all mixed up, all creamy, awesome, and tastes great. Okay, next I have to remove the frosting from the whisk attachment so that we can put it in our bowls and create colored frosting. So we're just going to take that out. Wonderful. Okay. So currently, we have a bunch of frosting and three cups. So we have to divide it equally. So, yeah. We're just going to do that. This one. when I was a girl when I was like a really little girl scout like a brownie we had a um, cookie decorating party and everyone got to bring cookies and we all ate them and they were so good and so I love decorating Christmas cookies just because of that one experience okay as you're scooping all of it out um, you should have some color ideas in mind for example I'm absolutely gonna make one of these green because green is my favorite color. Okay. Wow, this is looking great. Almost done with this. Just have to make sure we got it all out. Okay. Also, I'm sorry. Okay, great. Now, to my favorite part, we are going to use the food coloring and our three bowls, and we're going to make them colored. So, as I said before, I'm obviously going to use green, and I'm going to put around three to five drops. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to use four for now and see how that looks, and then we can add more if we need it. Just gonna whisk that up with a fork, but you can use pretty much whatever. Wow, this is super pretty, it looks great. Wow, okay, awesome. I'm gonna do one more drop, just to make it a tiny bit darker. Okay. That looks amazing. Awesome, one down, two to go. So we have, next I'm going to do a pink or a red, so see I'm going to start with three drops. Wow, this is definitely pink. Super pretty, super bright, and super fun. Okay. Wow, I love this. Super great. As you can see, it's super pink. Love that. And last but certainly not least, I'm going to do, let's see, I'll do yellow. This will be perfect for the stars we will be um, decorating later. So I did about four drops, and now, finally, I'm just gonna whisk it in. Wow, this is great. Wow, all these pretty, all these colors are so pretty. Okay. Now, okay, so now you can blend up all of your colors. So I have uh, green, red, or pink, and yellow. Now we are finally ready to frost our delicious cookies. Thank you for joining me today, and happy holidays. Hi, girls. It looks like a lot of, a lot of you have your frosting made. That's great. Thank you for watching this video with me. Okay, holiday bakers. It, now I'm going to hand you off to my Girl Scout sister, Chupacabra. Thank you, Avocado. That was great. I hope you had fun making frosting. Hi again, holiday bakers. It's me, Chupacabra. 
I'm going to remove these baked cookies from the baking sheet and transfer them to the surface while I share with you my favorite holiday tradition. So here I have this plate and here I have these delicious cookies and I'm just gonna transfer them to the plate. So my favorite holiday tradition is gathering with my family and eating tamales and pozole. And we celebrate Christmas basically on Christmas Eve and we open gifts um, on Christmas Eve night. It's just like a tradition that a lot of um, Mexican families do. And I love it so much because I love spending time with my loud and crazy family. So you can go ahead and now and move your cookies off of your baking sheet. This is my plate. Um, I have two other ones. Uh, I'm gonna try to make them fit. And here they look. Oh, nice and cute. Okay. So next, we are going to get all of our decorations together to prepare to decorate our cookies. So I like decorating cookies with all sorts of different color frostings. And I use so many sprinkles that sometimes I put so many that it doesn't even matter the color of the frosting that I used. So for my toppings, I have uh, peppermints and I crush them. I had a bunch of candy canes, so I crush them together. So we have like normal peppermints and then like the, like the sweet colorful ones. These are my favorite. You can also use red and green M&Ms, whatever is your favorite and whatever you have. So I'm gonna take a chunk of these because they're just so good. So my brother likes gumdrops and my mom loves chocolate chips. So let's fuel our cookies. They're cooling down nicely. So you can use a cooling rack. However it is, it's not absolutely needed and any clean and flat surface will do. It is important to allow your cookies time to cool off as you don't want your icing to melt off your cookies. Let's wait a few more minutes and then we can start decorating. Okay, my holiday bakers, it's time for me to hand you off to my Girl Scout sister, Papaya. Thank you, Chupacabra. Hello, holiday bakers, it's me again, Papaya. I'm so excited because it's almost time to frost our cookies. Before we start, I want to share with you these ornaments I started making earlier this month. See if you can see them. It's a little tree and they're made out of buttons and pipe cleaners. They're super cute. When I'm done decorating the cookies, I'm going to make a plate of cookies for my grandma and my neighbors. I'm going to add one of the homemade ornaments to the top of each cookie plate as a gift to bring a little cheer. At Girl Scouts, we like to make the world a better place and sharing home-baked cookies and homemade gifts is a way to do that. Let's do this. Send me a message in the chat box. Who could you give your homemade cookies to to try to spread a little cheer this holiday season? Some people said their neighbors also. Let's see. Some friends. Someone said their brother. Grandparents. And then someone also said their grandparents. Amazing. Okay. Now we are ready to decorate. As you can see here, I have my frostings, different colors. Well, let me take off my background really quickly. Okay, there we go. So my frostings, I have yellow, I have blue, and then I have red. I'm gonna set it up so you guys can see my cookies. We go. I also have different color sprinkles that I'm going to be using. So please decorate along with me. I'm going to start off 
with my gingerbread person. For my gingerbread person, I think I'm going to do like a yellow top. And there we go. Give it some sleeves. And then I think I'm going to do some blue pants. Hey, Pineapple, do you have any jokes? I do have a joke. Awesome. What did the Christmas tree do after its bank closed? Hmm. What? It opened, it's, oh, it started his own branch. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. <laughs> um, how do Christmas trees get ready for a night out? Um, I don't know how. They spruce up. Oh, that's a good one too. Okay. Um, what is a Christmas tree's favorite candy? Christmas tree's favorite candy. Um, I don't know. What is it? Ornaments. Oh, okay. That's a good one too. Okay, so next I added some red here to my gingerbread person. And I'm gonna add some, I have red sugar sprinkles. So I'm gonna add those two. And then I have marshmallows and chocolate chips. So I'm gonna add like, marshmallow shoes to my gingerbread person. And one more. And then I think I'm going to do some chocolate chip buttons and then I'm going to do chocolate chip eyeballs. Kind of looks like a minion. Like outfit. And then two little eyeballs. Well, maybe. Lost the chocolate chip and the stuff. One eyeball. And then two. Next cookie that I'm going to do is my star. I'm going to make it yellow. Pineapple, do you have any more jokes? I do. What is Santa's favorite fruit? Favorite fruit. Um, I don't know. What's his favorite fruit? Sugar plums. Sugar plums. That's a good one. Okay. Um, what did Santa Claus get a parking ticket? Or why did Santa get a park? Santa Claus get a parking ticket on Christmas Eve? I don't know why. He left his sleigh in a snow parking zone. Oh, um, that's a good one too. Let me see. Oh, I think I got a joke. Um, okay. Wait.
I'm not sure I understand that one. I think someone made a typo, so I'll let them send it again. Okay. Um, how much did Santa pay for his sleigh? Um, how much? Nothing. It was on the house. Oh, <laughs> I like that one. Oh, yeah, I like that one. What is Santa's favorite subject in school? Ooh, um, I don't know. That's like trying to think of something clever, but I can't come up with anything. What is it? Chemistry. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Uh, so now I'm going to make the ends of my star red because why not? Oh, let's see. Do like pattern. And I'm going to add some pink sprinkles. Perfect. Okay. And then last but not least, I'm going to do my Christmas tree. And I'm going to make my Christmas tree blue because it's my favorite color. And you can decorate your cookies any way you want to. Candyland, do you have a joke for me? Yes, I do. Awesome. Um, why did the Christmas tree go to the dentist? Why? Because it needed a root canal. Oh, I like that one. Okay. Does anyone else have any jokes? Um, yeah, I have a joke. Uh, how do you know when Santa's around? Um, how? You can always sense his presence. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Um, Candy Cane Texas said, why did the gingerbread man go to the doctor? Why? Because he felt crummy. Oh, that's cute. Um, what is Santa's, what is Santa Claus's favorite type of potato chip? Um, what kind? Crisp Pringles. Crisp Pringles, uh, makes sense, okay. Yeah. Um, what do you call an obnoxious reindeer? Um, I don't know what. What do you call him? Rude off. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> um, what do Santa's elves learn in school? I don't know, like the alphabet or something. Yeah, the alphabet. Oh, <laughs> yes. Um. Uh oh, what's the absolute best Christmas present? Um, I don't know what. A broken drum. You can't beat it. Oh. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, holiday bakers. You can keep on decorating and you can keep on rolling out dough and making more cookies. Can everyone show me their favorite cookie so far? Oh, there's some beautiful cookies going on. Okay, I'm gonna take a little picture. Hold up what you've got done.
Beautiful. And these are my cookies all done. Okay. It's time for me to hand you off to my Girl Scout sister, Kobe. Thank you, Papaya. Hi, Holiday Bakers. It's me again, Coconut. Thank you for joining us today for our Girl Scout Holiday Baking and Traditions event. I hope you all had as much fun as I did. As Papaya mentioned, feel free to continue to roll out and bake the rest of your cookies with your trusted adult. I hope that you are super proud of yourselves. You now know how to make a traditional holiday cookie recipe, how to make frosting, and you've decorated cookies with Girl Scouts across the country. How fun is that? Give me a big thumbs up if you had a great time. Me too. Okay, holiday bakers, let me hand you off to my Girl Scout sister, Chupacabra. Thank you, Coconut. Hi, holiday bakers, it's me, Chupacabra, and we are gonna send you some post-event materials following this session. In these materials, you will receive information on how to order your chef's anonymous badge. It's really cute. I have one right here on my vest. Wrong side. Super cute. Also, you will receive an invitation to our next event, which will be our journey in January. For those juniors out there, we hope you can join us. As we work to earn money for our travel next summer, we are offering at least one fun Girl Scout event each month. We'd love to see you at the next one. I hope you can make it. Now I'm going to hand you off back to Candyland, who will close out our event for us. Okay, let me turn off my background again really quickly. Um, okay. Background off. Give me one second. Hold on, Emily. Okay, here we go. Background off. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chupacabra. Hold on. Okay, thank you, Chupacabra. Hello, Holiday Bakers. I love my Chef's Anonymous badge as well, and it is on my vest. And here it is, right there. Um, I put it on my vest so I can show all of you how great it looks. Um, since this is a traditions event, we are going to end with the troop tradition that our troop has. Since COVID, we have hosted many virtual events, and we like to sing one last Girl Scout song together. This is a really fun part of this event because I'm going to ask all of you to unmute yourselves and sing along with us. Uh, the song is called Make New Friends. You may have heard of it before. Make me but keep me alone. Okay, holiday bakers, thank you for joining us today. Eat, enjoy your yummy and beautiful. Oh, sorry. Enjoy your holiday season. We hope to see you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.